this video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. There are a number of dirty jobs on a dairy farm, not just done by us farmers, but by our vets, breeder, and technicians too. With all the manure the cows produce, you can probably guess most of the dirty jobs have to do with poop. And a lot do, but not all. In this video, you'll see some of the dirtier jobs we do on the farm. Stay to the end to hear Eddie's rant about keeping equipment clean. So I dropped the kids off at school this morning. So I went and got a coffee for, well, myself and for Eddie. And co coffee, like takeout coffee is like Eddie's guilty pleasure. And it's it's funny, like I don't, I don't know why. He just loves takeout coffee. I bought him a, like a Keurig machine so that he could make single pot coffee, single cup of coffees in the barn, but that doesn't seem to cut it. And it's funny because when he worked construction, he would never stop and get a coffee. But now that he's a farmer and doesn't get off the farm, <laughs> what? Well, look at him. He's I'm telling the people of YouTube about your coffee addiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's becoming a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you drive in, and then I saw the van was going slow by the garage, and the door wasn't opening. So I figured you had coffee with you. Yeah. Only a big furry dog can relax on a sheet of ice. <laughs> Makes me cold just looking at her. I know. <laughs> So you have herd health, you're gonna wash some, you said you're gonna wash something? No, herd no. health, finish my feeding, take a bagger to a guy just to get a little weld job fix done for to get ahead of next year. And then I can park it once he's done fixing it. And then if it warms up enough today, then maybe I will wash stuff this afternoon. Oh, okay. A couple more baggers to wash. Anyways, when he worked construction, he never used to stop and get coffee. Like he would almost pride himself on not wasting money on coffee. But now that he's stuck on the farm, he like craves it every day and one time he went to a bagging job and a guy had coffee for him and it was just like that's now his like favorite customer he thought that was just amazing oh i gotta get out of the way the vet's here there are two places to get coffee around here yeah. and eddie eddie prefers one i prefer the other but wow. as you can tell he um is still happy with when i bring him coffee from from my preferred coffee place which is what i did today after much negotiation with Kylie, we are heading out to see if our vet and breeder are willing to be on camera for, for herd health. Herd health is when our vet and our breeder come and they meet and they check um, which cows and heifers are pregnant or recheck any confirmed pregnant to make sure they are still pregnant. So we'll show you what that's like and it's a pretty hands-off um, thing for us. It happens every other week and we have a lot of trust in our vet and breeder so we just kind of ask for the update afterwards. Okay, so here is our vet and our breeder doing herd health, which means they're checking to see if certain cows and heifers are pregnant, or perhaps rechecking any cows or heifers that were pregnant last time but had red flags or possibly reasons to check again. Our breeder has a list of cows and heifers to check. Right now we are in the dairy barn, so these are all cows and have already had at least one lactation. Our breeder finds the cows and works with the vet to let her know which ones to check. She then reaches inside the cow with a probe that shows her whether or not there is a baby calf inside. She has goggles on her head which she can look into to see what the probe is seeing and therefore lets our breeder know whether the cow is pregnant or not pregnant. She will also let him know whether they should recheck the cow next time for any various reasons she may have concerns over. Let's take a girl. Pepper. Oh. 
What else do you check for when you're in there? Like so you say she's pregnant, but I look for um, on their ovaries, the CL to see um, if it's nice and solid, meaning that it would good, be good to um, maintain the pregnancy with the progesterone hormone. Okay. And then I'm also looking through the uterus one for twins. Okay. Um, or triplets. Um, and to see the placental attachment. So sometimes you can start seeing it um, kind of peeling away a little bit almost looks like from the uterus. Okay. And those ones I'm a little bit more concerned and I'll often say recheck. Okay. Um, if it doesn't look like it's a good, a good placental attachment because okay. they could lose a pregnancy because of that. Okay. Yeah. And then you mentioned fluid with that other one. Is yeah, it, so there, there should be, same as the, the right size for a day pregnancy, there should be amount as a good amount of fluid and it changes day by day Okay. Um, how much we should expect. And she has the amount of fluid that I would expect in like a 27 day pregnancy and she was a 30, 30 32 day check. So she's okay. got quite a bit less fluid there than there should be at this point in her gestation. So okay. I'm a little worried. So often that'll happen if they, if it's just an early embryo loss. Okay. Um, they'll start losing fluid or the embryo dies and then that kind of like picks it out. She goes through a heat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might be a ball. She is pregnant. Oh. Mm. You what? I sexed a couple of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did so Tristan write that down? I don't think he did. Oh. No. That's good. That way we don't know. Okay. Ah. So I'm taking the bagger to a guy that uh, does a bit of welding and fixes stuff yeah, for me. Um, we're done with the bagger, the high moisture corn bagger for the season. So this is one of them. So there's this auger on it that brings your corn up into the hammer mill. And I had it at a job and we noticed it was cracking here on both sides. And the farmer that had it is a bit of a welder fixer guy. So he said, oh, I'll fix it. And then when I picked it up, he had that welded, but we should put a a little bit more steel on it like a piece of flat stock that's like a couple inches wide and an eighth of an inch thick maybe and then it for sure won't wreck next year so we'll get that done okay so tristan our breeder is just telling me that he's taking the frozen semen straws and thawing them, then putting them into the insemination gun. He then puts it in his boot to keep it warm and away from bacteria. The semen is kept in a liquid nitrogen tank in his truck for him to use at the various different farms he manages. Right now he's showing the plunger. The end of the gun pushes it into the correct spot in the cow. Now he's removing all the manure from inside the cow so that it's easier for, to find the uterus. Then he wipes the opening to make sure it is clean. She should be clean so that the semen entering is clean and sterile.
Okay guys, I'm here at my brother's place and we're gonna load up with some straw bales. Um, he's got, I got his heifer so I'm kind of uh, getting some straw from him and then we take that off the heifer raising bill. I'm a little bit tight on straw and he's got lots so uh, we're gonna pick up a load here and bring it home into my truck. Hey guys, this is a high moisture corn bagger that I was running this season. Um, we've got two of them this year, a side business that we have called Ag Rig, rents these out and guys bag high moisture corn with them and it uh, hammers the corn and packs it in a bag and it makes really good feed. So anyways, I'm really busy with these machines but the season's done, it's time to get them cleaned up. I oil them, I spray them complete with oil underneath all over the place, grease them and park them in my brother's shed for the winter so they're good to go for next year. Before I get the pressure washer going, I thought I'd get the rest of this corn out of here. It packs in pretty tight, and if you, if you go at it with the pressure washer, all the corn just blasts in your face. So I thought I'd take a hammer to it. This corn packs so tight, you need a hammer or a, a crowbar to get the last little bit of it out of here, which is fine. We don't always clean it right out, but I want to get it washed up. And got to get it washed up and brought back to the dealership because this is a machine that we kind of rented, but if we had enough work for it, we were going to buy it. And uh, we started renting it halfway through the season this year, and we were really busy with it because people are really happy with the high moisture corn that comes out of these machines. So anyways, the dealer needs it back to do a couple of small repairs because I do want to buy it but there's a few things he needs to fix um, to make it like it's new because it's only been used for this year's season. It did some work in the US in a rental fleet that was coming up through the US and it finished in New York and that was, oh, it must have been the beginning of November and then it came up to Ontario here and then I used it for a couple of weeks and so it did some work this year but it's a 2023 model and I really like it so now I got two of them.
So when you own equipment and uh, you want to take good care of it, you got to wash it, grease it, oil it, and when you rent equipment out, that always ends up being late in the year. So I just got it washed, and now I'm going to take it back to the dealership. But anyways, it's probably the my least favorite job. You get filthy, it's cold once it's end of December, and that's when you end up washing it, when you rent equipment out, because you always have somebody that ends up wanting it when you think everything's done. It's not done, you got to rent it out again. And if you want any money left at the end of this to make money in renting equipment out, you got to take good care of it. You got to grease it, you got to wash it. I oil it when I'm done, and then when you trade it in, you guys that own equipment, you know what it's like. When you're looking at trading in something in in five or six years, all of a sudden, boom, it's worth, the new one is worth double what you paid when you bought the last one. So if you're not taking care of your stuff, you're never going to make any money trading equipment in. But you're just going to lose because nobody wants your piece of junk. Okay, are you done? Yeah. So after you're done washing a piece of equipment, you want to grease it right away, especially when it's before winter so you can get all the water pushed out from those bearings. 